What is up folks? This gorgeous 9.5 inch curved beauty has a bit of a story to it. Please allow me to explain. However, I do want to respect your time. If you wanna go ahead and jump to where the review starts, scrub along here in the video or the time code in the description will take you to where the nitty gritty begins on this knife. Okay, you're still here. You want the story, awesome. The year was 2014. I was working as a chef de partie at the French Laundry at the time. And I somehow or another got this advertisement for this knife that was made with cryogenically treated steel, gemstone counterweights in the handle, a one-of-a-kind burl wood handle, custom pins, and a blade profile that was designed to reinforce the motion of rock chopping, all while at the same time being made here in the U.S., Okay, you have my attention. So I started to do my research. This guy Noah was making these knives by hand in California and the price wasn't all that expensive. Remember, at the time I had a Ninox in a pretty esteemed box in my head and their 9.5 inch chef knives go for close to $800. So to see someone playing with knives in a similar bracket at four to $600 was just insane to me. I wanna even say that back then he was taking orders for knives where he would cast the grip of your hand in clay and then model the knife handle off of that so it was truly made for your fingers as you hold it. It was just in insane. So long story short, I never bit the bullet. I was just making above minimum wage. I wasn't all that sound with my finances and I didn't really need it. My knife prep was too intricate to justify a workhorse like that. So I moved to Seattle in 2017. That whole three year span, I was following the guys at Aura where they were just creating. I was watching them grow and that's right around the time when I met this guy named Matt Broussard. Most of you know Matt, I've had him on the podcast. He's got a really fun IG and YouTube channel. And I see, whoa, he's cooking with Aura knives. That's super cool. Little do I know, Matt and Noah, the owner of Aura, are super tight homies. And I asked Noah on Instagram, now that I've finally got this platform where I review gear for chefs, I said, hey man, do you want to collaborate on a video? And he answers and he goes, you can either wait for this Aura One, which is one of their uh, higher end knives, to get back from a loan, uh, or I've got a Hollywood handled Aura Two left. I've got just one and I will give you a discount for making a video on it, let me know. And so in my head, I figured, why not go to the guy with the most Aura knives I know and try before I buy? So here's a vlog from that evening. Gonna need a few of these. Uh, let's go. Oh, look at that. It's so wet and rainy and cold outside. And we are here on January 9th. 2019, I went to this place called Dick's Drive-In. Can I have a deluxe and a cheeseburger and an order of fries, please? <laughs> got dinner. Just kidding, I'm not making a This Place Called episode. It's just, if I don't eat now, I'm not gonna eat until later tonight. Dick's is not my favorite burger ever, but Anna and I used to live really close to here and we used to come here all the time because it was like super cheap and super convenient close to our house. And so I never come here anymore, but if you come here, you should order the deluxe and a cheeseburger. The fries are always kind of uh, soggy though. Okay, we are actually here now and I've been texting with my friend Matt because he has this knife that I've really wanted to check out forever. And so he said, do you want to come over and get your hands on version one, version two? Let's go check it out. What's up, my dude? I have no idea how to open <laughs> that fucking thing. That's fine. We're doing a fake unboxing now. Yeah. So this is how the Aura used to come. I love this. Check it out. Like handmade in California. It's carved on here. Like this is a box you don't want to throw away. And then you open it up. With the moss. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that sick? That is sick. He like hand wrote a note for me there. Yep. And then it'll have like instructions for the carrying of the blade. I guess give me a rundown. What's your, what's your relationship? What's your, what's the story? So Noah, he saw some pictures on my Instagram and saw that they were all Japanese knives. He's a fan and he's like, I need to get you some American steel. So he sent me this one. Got it. Which I was super and when stoked was this? for. This was like about five years ago when I was like a new fresh cook at Palace Kitchen. Yeah. Fresh to Seattle. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like my first actual knife here was a Miyabi, uh -huh. which is good, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he was like, he wanted to get me some good steel. So it's like, so wide here. I'm so down for that. Look how wide that is. Yeah. That's what pretty much all my chefs say is like, it's too wide, but it's no, perfect. Man. I love it. Yeah. I mean, especially if you choke up on it and you can see what he did with the new one. I was going to say, so it slimmed down. Uh huh. 
Yeah, this is much more exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, I love this sheet because it has the leather. Oh, yeah. On, on one. On oh, the shirt. strop on one yeah. side. So check that out. So a wooden saya, custom fit for the knife, but it's got a strop on one side of the saya. It's hey, pretty dope. So, and then what about this one? This is a little baby he one. He never released that guy. <laughs> it was like a little petty. Yeah, he was gonna, uh, this I believe he was gonna weird. call it the Prana. The Prana? And I really wanted it, so he mm -hmm. gave me one. That's awesome. He gave that to me when he went to my Napa dinner. Yep, that's and tight. I, I love it, it's really that's nimble. Tight. So this is much thinner, stainless steel. This is 190. Oh man, or a two. It's cause it doesn't have that counterbalance. Yeah, yeah this is way lighter. Yeah. So this is originally what I thought I was gonna go for because I saw very similar design details. The steel is almost the same, right? In it both, is the same. It is the same it's steel. It's the exact same steel. And so I'm not one to overly romanticize about handle materials. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think this one makes the most sense for me. The Hollywood one's really nice. Yeah, Have the white, that? the all white, mm -hmm. that's tight. Okay, so should we cut some shit? Yeah. I'm losing track of knives here. Where did that one go? Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this drags too much when you're cutting, especially if you're going on like, yeah, I can't even, yeah, that's wild. It's too thick. Yeah. It's like trying to, uh, cut a shallow with a day butt knife. Do you think she'll mind if I use her knife? She won't mind. It's probably very dull though. <laughs> Let's see what happens. All right. So I will probably do a review of one of these eventually. I, at least I hope to. But if you, Chakra 2.0. Mm -hmm. I like to end with always, who is it for and should you buy it? So it'd be good for a home cook. Uh-huh. It's good for a home cook. Because it's less can, intimidating. It's less intimidating. It's mm -hmm. not so big. It's, you know, it's a cheaper price point. Yeah. And it's still a gorgeous knife. Totally. We're going to make some French onion soup now or what? <laughs> <laughs> All the fucking onions. Yeah. yeah. Mirepoix for days. <laughs> so this was clearly a little bit more than just a first impressions. I got to see side by side of both of them. Now the next step is getting one in for review, but I mean, you probably have more Aura knives than <laughs> anyone. <laughs> I guess, if I had yeah. to argue, other than <laughs> Noah, but I mean, you're 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 his you're one of his biggest advocates, which is amazing. And thus, that brings us here. I've been cooking and prepping with this for the past few weeks, and I really feel more than ready to share with you my thoughts on it. So let's get into it. So on paper, the Aura 2 is a unique product. It's not budget, per se, retailing at $499, which I will get into later. It's pretty much sold out in all handle styles at this point, unfortunately, but it is more affordable than any other Aura knife right now that they're selling. I do have to hand it to Noah on his copywriting on the Aura site, allow me to just read a few few of the descriptors that help describe the details of this knife. Metallurgical Meta research, ergonomic, ergonomic leverage, 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 progressively, progressively rockered, rockered profile, profile, smooth initiation, clear, clear geometric clear fundamentals. fundamentals. I mean, come on, man, you can't do that to us gearheads. But seriously, he does know how to talk to someone who appreciates knives and uses them day in and day out, and it shows in the design of this knife. I can confirm that the steel does not shine, which is really wild as you use it. It definitely catches people's eye. The handle is also made from this really light wood that they took with it and ran with it, and they called it the Holly because of the beautiful blondes running around there where they are at in Southern California, down in Hollywood. Checking back in on the steel, we're working with their proprietary Aura Steel. It's noted at a 60 Rockwell hardness and frickin' back at it again with the judging. Quote, it's chock full of microscopic vanadium and neobium cutting carbides that are 81 to 89 Rockwell hardness when measured individually, end quote. Just being real, you can overall expect really fantastic performance with really great ease of sharpening. It's got that equal double bevel on the edge. Mine did have a bit of a heel issue out of the box. I could tell that whoever did the final sharpen on it clipped the edge up just because of a slight bend towards the heel. I can't tell if one came before the other or if they all happened at the same time. I haven't noticed any performance issues on my end, but it's just, I gotta be transparent. Yes, I got this for a discount. Yes, it was the last one. And yes, these are handmade, so expect them to kind of vary piece by piece, especially when you're looking at the handle materials, they are very, very unique, but I just wanted to make that super uh, out in the open. What surprised me though is it does have that lacquered effect where you aren't technically gripping the wood, which gives way into this wild, seamless experience on the handle. Listen, you can't hear the seam. 
it's all just encased together. I'm trying to run my nail over and let you folks hear where the seam is, but it doesn't exist. It's all like encased in this resin. And the joining of the brass bolster and the mosaic pins leaves no room for gaps and it flares in all the right places, which for a pinch grip, I love. Matt was showing me a couple of the earlier handle types where it would flare really dramatically in the palm of your hand and then it would kind of taper off. And this just feels so much more natural to grip, which I really, really appreciate. The spine is beveled, bravo, if you're uh, following this channel for a while, you know I really, really love that detail. If you go and look super close here, I've got a macro lens on, you can see that there's this seam of the blade into the tang, so take that for what it's worth. All right, let's talk about what it feels like to work with this. I would basically take every instance that I would normally use my 9.4 inch Misono UX10 and reach for this guy instead over the last few months, and I gotta say, there was never a time when I was like, I wanna switch back. I was very, very comfortable using this, and the comfort is unreal. Asterisk, I'm not prepping for usually long than four hours anymore at this point in my career, but no signs from fatigue for that amount of time, and it truly does have the capacity to be multi-purpose. So vegetables, chicken, skinning and portioning fish, hashing garlic and shallots and chopping herbs, and this thing held up great through all of it. And if I did have to give any complaints, I wish the steel was just a little bit harder, but I understand wanting to keep it a little bit softer, especially when the blade is this thin. I think if anything, I was less inclined to grab different specialty knives in my bag because I was just wanting to keep using this because it is so comfortable to use and that heavy day after day use just led to it losing its edge faster quote unquote but that's just how I perceived it so weird compliment let's talk about balance real quick if I go like that that's pretty uh, spot on right where the uh, handle and bolster meet if you like a blade heavy knife versus a handle heavy knife this is pretty much spot on right in the middle which you might enjoy and you might not enjoy it is significantly lighter than the aura one it's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards this initially when I was over at Matt's place and even looking at it stacked up against my UX10, a knife that's notoriously well-balanced, you're just able to get a really good feeling in the hand with almost 25% less weight, which I'm looking at as a completely different knife. It's not, this is a nine and a half inch knife and the Misono is a nine and a half inch chef knife. If I'm looking for some heft, if I want more weight in my hand and the project on the board, I'll go for the Misono. If I want more comfortable and nimble, or a two. I really wish I could end this with who is this knife for and should you buy it, but the buying part might pose a little bit of a challenge. I have one link down below for jbprints.com and they have it in black right now as of posting this video. It is still in stock, but Noah doesn't seem to be making any more of these. He launched the new Shocker knife very recently, a knife that I initially thought I was gonna get when I went over to check them all out at Matt's place. And of course the Aura one is always available on their site. If you wanna see more reviews of Aura stuff, please get some color on that like button and crush that subscribe button like an unassuming clove of garlic or even go ahead and DM the Aura Instagram which is also linked up down below because I really think that you should follow them for some amazing knife porn shots on IG. If you have questions for me on this knife please leave them down low in the comments or tweet at me I'm at Justin underscore Kana there. Until next time thank you so much for your attention yes I've seen that we just hit 10k thank you that video is coming ASAP my name is Justin Kana and I really hope you have a good one.